Uh, what I find particularly interesting about studying gender in Greek tragedy is that the ancient Greeks did not have the theoretical background that we now have on gender studies. That is to say the division between sex and gender. Well, the first one refers to our anatomy. The second one refers to the social expectations attached to being a man or being a woman. So in classical Greek texts, you, we constantly see that it's very clear they were aware of this fluidity in terms of gender, that to say the social expectations, um, which is depicted mostly in philosophy, where we see philosophers like Plato and Aristotle trying to define masculinity again and again. This is some kind of anxiety in finding out what it is. The same applies in Sophocles' Antigone. Uh, so along with all the other major themes of the play, that is the individual versus the collective, or the polis versus the oikos, divine versus human law, etc. We have really intense conversation happening about what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman. So out of all of our main characters, we have Creon, the king, who is the ambassador of the more traditional ideals inherited from Homer's time. Uh, he says many times, for example, that women are supposed to be inferior to men and that they're supposed to stay away from public life. He says that especially in his scene with Haman, only to be challenged by the other two main characters, Haman and Antigone. Uh, so what happens with the other two is that not only do they not agree with Creon, but also we see Haman, who's a man, adopting some more feminine behavioral patterns, whereas Antigone, who's a woman, acts uh, in the ways that would usually be characterized as masculine. So starting with Haman, before he contradicts um, the views of his father, when he meets him in his scene, uh, we see that he first tries to smoothly change his mind in a more cunning way by flattering him. Uh, and this, first of all, opposes Antigone's upfront confrontations, and secondly, cunningness, as we can see in other Greek tragedies, that is usually characteristic used for women, uh, with examples of uh, Medea and Phaedra in Euripides. Uh, second, when the messenger describes his death, it's described in a very, uh, as a very lyrical, sentimental piece, where uh, Haemon dies cuddling Antigone's dead body. Uh, whereas we see that even though Antigone mourns about her misfortunes, she does not mention her feelings about Haemon directly. Antigone, now, on the other hand, we see there's a pun in her name. So Antigone comes from anti and gonos, someone who's rebellious in the family. But it sounds a lot like Antigune, which means, Gune means in Greek, woman. So her name could sound like the opposite of a woman. And indeed, we see that a lot, especially in the prologues, is the exact opposite of what we would expect a woman to act like. So Antigone does not believe that women should stay away from public life. She's one of the first people to know about Cream's decree. And she also thinks that she should take action. And we see how angry she gets when Ismini, her sister, refuses her help. Um, and also, even though she despises Ismini for not agreeing to help her, we see that as opposed to Creon, whose judgment is clouded by fixed ideals about genders, uh, she elevates it to the sphere of uh, rightfulness about morals and fighting for what is right, regardless um, of one's gender. Uh, in the end, we see that Antigone is the one who dies honored as a hero. So Ismini and Haemon defend her while she's alive. Tiresias and the chorus manage to change Creon's mind after she has been to her prison. Well, Creon is the one who ends up dying in isolation. So if we put this all together and we see that Creon um, who brings and uh, makes crucial decisions based on these ideas about what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman. Um, he's the one who ends up destroyed partly because he makes decisions based on these ideas. And then we have Hemon, who's a man with a more feminine behavior, and Antigone, who's a woman that acts like a more conventional man. Um, I think it becomes quite clear that Sophocles, among other classical Greek authors was uh, quite interested in this kind of fluidity of gender.